And we're back with some more Dyson Sphere program. And today we're going to be getting into sort of uh, towers or transportation towers and the fourth science sort of simultaneously. One thing that was pointed out to me is when you're going for these towers, what you should do is automate the, the automate all the resources for making them, which yeah, is fairly logical. But what we're going to do here is say, see this particle container. We're going to need this for the towers, but for that we're going to require graphene. That graphene is going to be also necessary for one of the other things we want to get our hands on which is these purple sciences. They require particle broadband and particle technology, that stuff here, that requires that uh, high strength material, that high strength material, which is this stuff carried by nanotubes, requires graphene. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start building all the necessary infrastructure to produce this and siphon it off for now to make ourselves a whole bunch of towers that we're going to use to knock out all the rest of the, the resources and science from around the, this, this solar system. To make graphene, we're going to need energetic graphite and sulfuric acid. Yeah, energetic graphite, that's easy enough. All we need is coal. We've got that nearby. The sulfuric acid, well, we're going to need oil and we're going to need water and we're going to need stone. So if you notice, we've got stone over here, we've got oil over here, we've got water all around us and a bunch of coal right here. So we're just going to turn this into our graphene production facility right here. First up, we're going to need some refined oil so that we can produce uh, sulfuric acid. And yeah, I left out one power pole, didn't I? Yeah, that's just perfect. But we'll put that power pole there. This gives us the refined oil. All the excess hydrogen, we're just going to burn off. We don't want it. Then that just leaves us with sulfuric acid. For that, we're going to need about, ooh, I think it's three or four of these refineries. Where is it? Three or four of the chemical plants. That should be fairly straightforward. And that was fairly painless. We brought in the water from over there. We brought in the light oil from over here. Was it refined oil? Whatever. I keep calling it light oil. Factorio are getting to me again. So water, light oil, and we spit out the sulfuric acid on the other side. Now it's time to take all of this and turn it into graphene. And for that, we're going to need some of that coal and a bunch more chemical plants. Mmm, chemical plants. And here is the result of all our chemical plants. We've got a bunch of them here, more than we actually need. But we've brought in a, a bunch of energetic graphite from over there. We've uh, fed it in this side. We've also fed in all of the um, mm, sulfuric acid from this side. And lo and behold, we've got ourselves some graphene, which we have coming all the way down here and chucked into this box. Now, to build the uh, towers, we do need a few other bits and bobs. Uh, namely, we need, where is it? Ah, yeah, we need this stuff, the Tritanium Alloy. And the Tritanium Alloy is actually not that bad. I'm remembering this setup. We jerry-rigged this before. I pretty much remember the last time. There's no real convenient way to get this there early. So you basically combine steel, sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid at the back, and titanium. So we just filled this box with some titanium and some steel, and boom, we get out a bunch of this the other side, which is, yes, going to be useful for us to building the towers. Done. Now, next up, though, we still have to make those particle containers, and I think we're going to automate that process. These things require 20, these things require 20. I think we're just going to build a little particle container facility, just one, one of them, and just have that turned out. All it needs is graphene, we've got that here, some copper, we've got that here, and those motors there, all they require is iron and copper as well, so... I think this should be fairly handy. After doing a little thinking about this, I realized, what am I doing? There's a, an electromagnetic turbine production right over here, where we have our uh, our mall. So our mall here can automatically can make those anyway. So why not just bring the graphene down here, throw in a little bit of copper, and next thing you know, we've got a whole area through here where we can turn out particle containers. Should not be a bother at all. We've got all of the main ingredients we need right here. And in fact, we're not too far, we could, hmm. No, no, we don't need uh, the blue ones just yet, but we can definitely get the energetic graph uh, particle containers. There we have our first particle container production setup. God, this is terrible. We're just tacking this on, though, to the end of our mall, so I think actually I'm going to integrate this more next time. Be more concerned with where I place my mall so that I know that once I throw in some graphene, we can actually turn this out. This is actually handy to have. In fact, we might double down on this. We could stick in another one of these right here and just reverse it the opposite direction to feed into that and double production. In fact, I think we're going to do that right now. We are finally producing our first interstellar logistics station. Perfect. Now we just need 10 ships to go with it, and we can then automate the production of, or automate the import of titanium. Though we're going to need some more silicon for that. Uh, where is it? Ah, uh, yes. We dumped a bunch of it over here in some storage containers just for later use. I think we've got enough to get what we need. With our first transport station complete, that means we are going to have to decide where to place it, and I think it's going to be pretty obvious, right here where the titanium is required. We'll put that just about, you know what, we'll put it back a bit so we can uh, at least wind it up. And then the transport drone can go all the way up to the top to place it, and then come all the way back down again. Alright, let's uh, plug that into the power grid. Its job will be to pull titanium from the other planet in our system. 
Oof, I forgot how much power they drain. Yep, yep, there we go. It's gonna it's gonna max out the grid, just about. Alright. That will solve titanium. Well, once the rest of our production completes, right now we're, we've queued up a bunch of ships and the other transport tower. But they shouldn't be too bad, especially considering we've now automated the production of these particle containers. Anyway, let's give me, give me five minutes so we can sort out uh, getting the titanium back. Well, this place is now fully loaded. We've got our ten ships up there. We've got it requesting the titanium. All we got to do now is pop to the other planet and make this a reality. Should only take two minutes. Would you look at that? No more running back and forwards. Uh, I love when you get to this stage of the game, though. Mm, no, no, we'll, we'll talk more about that later. But what I like is we now just... We don't have to worry about titanium for so long. In fact, when it comes to titanium again, it'll just be a case of upgrading this to a larger titanium section. That's it. That's all we've got to do with this. Now we've got to do the same thing with the silicone on the fire planet. We have a silicone mine out on the very edge over there on the, the fourth planet. Uh, it's really far away and the power is there is really poor, but we're going to have to go there sooner rather than later. And back home we can see the titanium has already started moving. Exit. Now all we have to do is just plug it into the system. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward, actually. Uh, or maybe not. Yeah, we can, we can step it across there somehow. Done. There we go. Slotted in nice and neat. Like I'd love. Perfect. Uh, uh, I don't think... You know what? I don't think we need this anymore. We can uh, keep that in storage. We'll keep the titanium in case we need it for anything. Done. All right. Next up, silicon. Uh, how are we doing? Oh, wow. I queued up a bunch of stuff here. Well, we'll have 10 ships and we already have... I think we already have the transport down. Yes, we do. We already have an interstellar logistics station. It's just a case of deciding where our silicon is going to go. Silicon-wise, we're going to get it from this furthest away planet. Now, this furthest away planet has very poor solar... It's, what, 60-something percent? 67 percent. It's kind of weak, but you know what? A couple of... Uh, power belts around the center and we were able to power this just a smelting facility for producing silicon. Silicon goes in here and we ship it all back home. That's it. Fairly straightforward. Now one wonderful quality of life change they made just recently was, where is it? We'll zoom out a bit. We want to go back to say our home planet. So what you can do is you can just click on your home planet wherever it is and then you can say, ooh, give me an indicator. There you see that blue line. That blue line indicates that that's where we should go if we want to go back to our home planet, which is a really handy quality of life feature. This is especially useful when you're trying to do interstellar travel and you're trying to find a planet to travel to. It just makes things so much faster. Anyway, let's uh, skip back to the home planet, shall we? So far, we're using that silicone to make, well, solar panels. That's it. We've got a whole stack of them there, so it's not really that necessary just yet. But I think that solves that. I think next up, we're going to want to get into automating the next level of science. Moving up to their purple. Hmm. Actually, one second, let me just check something over here because we've got most of our uh, graphite production over there, or graphene. So let's see where we're going to squeeze in over here. Some bad news, unfortunately. Uh, the whole point of this one was we were going to make ourselves a ginormous Dyson Sphere. The last one I made was quite small. And what I wanted to do was make a really, really big one, as in a max-sized Dyson Sphere around, your, around the solar system. Or, well, around our planets. Unfortunately, it turns out this is not the largest size Dyson Sphere you can make. It turns out the size of the Dyson Sphere is dependent on the star you're around. So if you make it around this sun, you'll get, this is the maximum size you can hit. And I, I'm not sure of the exact mechanics of this, but I went off and did some playing around on other maps. Uh, let me show you another map. This system here, this system here is a blue giant. Not just a blue sun, a blue giant. There's usually about two or three giants on your map. If we zoom out here, you can see there's a, another blue giant over here and a red giant over there. Red giants, smaller than blue giants, it turns out. So if you want to be, build the absolute maximum size Dyson Sphere, you need to find a blue giant sun. Now, what you can see here is we can... Oh, wow, that's, that's 103,700, but we can crank it all the way up to there. So, yep, yeah, you can definitely make it larger, but it turns out it's not... Oh, it turns out each blue giant is different. Uh, I'm not sure what metric it's looking at or what it is precisely but this sun here say is well it doesn't actually tell me but if we were to travel to a different blue giant in this exact same map we've got a blue giant right over where is it yeah right over here this one this blue giant if we were to head that direction you'll notice it's got a completely different size 
One incredibly quick warp later, say hello to a different blue giant, and say hello to its Dyson Sphere radius of 218,800, which is the largest one I've been able to find. I checked about 10 maps and just, uh, well, I, I used some mods to basically get here as quickly as I possibly could and figure it out. So from what I can tell, there is a maximum size of Dyson Sphere you can get, but I don't know what it is. And I don't want to keep playing on the map we're playing because it only has red giants, meaning we've no blue giant to put a Dyson Sphere around. So all the time and effort put in there, we're still not going to have a blue giant to play with her when we finish up. But what I'd really like to do is find a map with the largest possible blue giant, or the largest possible Dyson Sphere we can stick around a blue giant. We could, in theory, put a dozen Dyson Spheres around one blue giant just for fun, but I just want the largest one. So if anyone knows of any maps or mods or anything else that allows you to find the largest blue giant type you can possibly get, that would be great. If you found a, a larger blue giant than this, just please let me know in the comments, chuck it down there, because I want to play on that map. That's the map I want to play on. Uh, for the time being, I think I'm going to cut out this series anyway, because th there's no point doing it if we're just going to have to do it again for the next blue giant. So, uh, I suppose... Please find me a blue giant if you can. I'll keep looking and see if I can't find something bigger. But so far from all my testing, this is the largest one I've got. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry to be cutting it so short. It's just I realized we were going to be doing all of this all over again if I kept going. And I thought, no, 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 no point wasting everyone's time. Anyway, I think uh, I think tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to be doing a little bit of Mountain Blade Warband as a, a palette cleanser. It's an old game, but I thought I'm taking a little bit of a break from RimWorld for the next week because, you know, it was, it was a little bit of an intense playthrough last while. So I think I'll try Mountain Blade as a sort of a... Just a, a calm down. It's easy, easy game to play. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and good luck. Hmm, maybe it's actually to do with the radius. It could be to do with the radius of the sun. This radius is larger than the last one. Also, it's got far more mass. So it's got more mass, more radius. Also, its luminosity is higher and it's younger. Hmm. You know, I'll have to do some more research into this.